Hello! In this video, we're going to make a maze game for the microbit. The aim of the maze game is to get the ball from one corner to the other as many times as possible within the time. It's got a nice little timer that counts down and it'll give you a score at the end. So, let's get started. So, to create our maze, we're going to need some cardboard, some tin foil, our microbit obviously, four crocodile clips and then something to stick things together with. So first, we're going to take the bit of cardboard. And I've chosen a small cereal packet. And why this is quite ideal is I don't need to do a lot of cutting things out. So this already has edges and I am going to make a little tray box with this. So what I'll do is I'm going to cut down here um, and then I'll make my tray box. So once I've got my box like this, I'm also going to create just something to hold the micro bit. So I've got a little bit of stronger card and I'm going to pop that here so that we can place our micro bit up top like that. Maybe doesn't need to be so high. I can adjust that in a minute. But what we're also going to need is some obstacles within here. So I'm just going to use some card and I'm going stick them down. It might be useful to before I do that is to work out where things are going to be. So I need to have a contact in this corner. So I need this corner to be free and I could say that I'll have my other contact in this corner to make it nice and easy. Um, and then I could maybe say right I want a wall down here in my maze. I want a wall here that maybe goes a little bit let's have like that like that there you go that's quite a simple maze so i'm going to build the walls for that just now i'll just show you as i'm going is how i'm making these walls is i'm getting a bit of cardboard i'm folding an edge and then I'm cutting that edge so that I can have tabs so that some of the tabs sit one side, some of the tabs sit another, and then that gives stability for your structure. So the next stage is adding in our tinfoil contacts. You see I've cut them here, just thin strips. And what needs to happen is they need to go in each corner, but there needs to be a gap between the ones that are in a corner. So you need to have that gap. If they're touching, then it will always activate the circuit. You want them only to activate it when your um, ball hits them. So if I have a ball of tin foil, it will create the circuit between them. So let's do that now. So once our contacts are in place, you see I do have that little gap between them, which is the important part. I can then do the wiring. So then I need to connect up the wire. So I'm going to connect one side to the ground pin and that's going to be one side of each of these. So if I choose this one here, that's going to be connected to the ground pin and I'll connect the other one of these to the ground pin as well. So let's connect this side and connect it to the ground pin. And you might have to connect one side to the crocodile clip and the other side to the micro bit just to get them to fit. And then we want one of the other, other ones to be connected to pin zero. So let's connect this one to pin zero. And then finally, I'm going to connect the other end of the other one to pin one, like this. The important thing is make sure you're touching the tin foil, otherwise the circuit's not going to work. So I'm going to tidy up the wires and then I'll get on to the coding. You can also make a ball for this, so it could be scrunched up tin foil, or if you have a metal ball bearing, something like that would work. You could also wrap something in tin foil because it needs to conduct electricity. 
So you're ready to build your own. The code for the maze is fairly complex because there's lots going on. We've got a timer and we've got pins being activated on both sides. So first we're going to set up some of the variables. So if I go into variables, the first variable I'm going to make is score. And let's make the other ones as well. So I want a pin zero status. So status by status, I just mean is pin zero on or off. Um, and then I'll also make a pin one status. And I'll explain how we're using them in a second. The final one is I'm going to make a variable called timer. So we've got score, timer, pin zero status, and pin one status. So on start, we are going to set up these variables. So if I set and then set score to zero, I'm also going to just duplicate that, change it to pin zero status and duplicate again and change it to pin one status. So all of those are zero. I am also finally going to duplicate it and set it the timer to zero. This is Mr. Morrison from the future, just to point out that you should set timer to a number, either 30 seconds or 60 seconds or up to 99 seconds. It shouldn't be zero, I made a mistake. Now, I could show string, so I can go in here and I'll have a string that says go, because once everything's ready, we want a go command. So that's going to be on start, but that's only going to happen when it starts. I want a way for that to happen later in the code. So I'm going to duplicate that and I am going to remove the on start and find an on button A pressed. So that means we can essentially reset the game when uh, button A is pressed. Next thing, in forever, we're going to have an if loop. So we're going to have if else and we're going to have a statement um, that is one of these ones. So if I drag one of these ones up, I'm going to zoom in for this bit. I'm going to have on one side, I'm going to have my timer or countdown timer um, in this one. And then zero is the same, but rather than greater, I'm going to find this symbol just below, which is greater than or equal to. Okay, so that's all you need to worry about that. Uh, and then in here, I'm going to have a melody. So find the melody. I'm going to have the melody for the ending. So let's have wah, wah, wah. Um, so this is if the timer gets to zero, it'll play the melody wah, wah, wah. And it is also going to show a string. So let's have a string um, to say score. And then I need to have a number that is the score. So it's going to show the number. And that number is our variable score. So it's going to uh, show the score. And then let's just add a pause so it keeps that score on for a two seconds, say. But if this is if else. So else is going to be our timer. So to set up our timer, we're going to do a couple of things. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to have an every in the loops. We're going to have every and we're going to have every second. We're going to change the countdown timer, not by one, but adding in a little takeaway, a minus sign in there to change the timer by minus one. So every one second, it'll change the timer by minus one. Now I'm going to show the timer number. Now the timer number, I used this in the last lesson. I'm going to use an extension to display the number nicely. So this is called Wally Sans font. And you'll find it by just uh, searching Wally Sans and then 
it appears and there's one block for Wally Sans font and we're going to drag it in up here. So we're going to show a number and that number is going to be our timer. So now it's going to show a countdown timer. The last thing we need to do is something for ha to happen for pin one and for pin two. So if I go into input, I'm going to go if pin is pressed. So let's have if pin one is pressed, on pin one pressed, then we'll have if, and just a single if statement, and we're going to change score. So we're going to find this and change score. I'm just going to pause this for a second so it's not making all the noises. And then I want to set my pin status to one. So this is pin one status and this is going to be to one. And I'll duplicate this and I'm going to set pin zero status to zero. So this means, this is the bit that means you can't keep scoring every time you hit pin one. You need to go back to pin zero and then back to one. That's how, that's what the pin status is. So that's why this is a little bit complicated, but it makes the game much more engaging. And finally, it's going to show an arrow. So if I go into basic and show arrow, I'll show arrow to the west. So that means it'll go that way. And then last thing I'm going to do is I need exactly the same stuff for pin zero, but we're just going to change things slightly. So pin zero, what I'm going to do is I'm going to change score by one. I'm going to change pin zero status. So let's have the first one pin zero and the second one pin one. Pin zero status to one and pin one status to zero. And then it's going to face east. Now I notice I missed out a section. So I missed out the last bit is I need a, a comparison here. And that is if the pin status is, so if we have pin one status, is equal to zero, then it's allowed to do this, but if it's not, it won't do anything. And then the same way, we're going to duplicate here. And in here, we're going to have pin zero status. So now that's all the code there, ready to go. And so that's your finished game. You'll be able to press the reset button to restart it and then it goes from one side and then you go around oh, all the way to the other side of your maze depending on how far you've gone and then it'll tell you to go to the other side and you keep doing that until the timer ends. So we are and then it's telling to go this side. Oh, so my final score there